Judge Eileen Cannon has fully taken the mask off, if it can be ever been said to have been on. She is Trump's pet judge and she is going to do whatever it takes to protect him in this stolen documents scandal. No matter how ridiculous the decisions, no matter how biased, no matter how contradictory the things she does now are to the things she did earlier in this same process. And so in this clip, we have got, I believe, three separate ways that she has just stacked the deck for Donald Trump. And she doesn't care how obviously biased this makes her look. Let's jump into the first, and this is an important one. She set aside a measure imposed by the special master, Raymond Deary, asking Donald Trump and his legal team to certify the accuracy of the FBI's inventory of the property that it had seized from Mar-a-Lago back in August. So Raymond Deary, apparently he had this crazy notion. The crazy notion was, if you are going to continually say that the FBI planted documents, here's a list. Point to the ones they planted. Point to the ones that you didn't steal. If they planted it, point to it. And she's like, no, 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 no. Don't make him actually go on the record. Let him just continue to to bleed it out on Truth Social. Don't make him have to actually say which ones are planted. Certainly don't put pressure on his lawyers to actually say which one it is. Because spoiler alert, they're not gonna do that because it would be lying and they would love to be able to continue to practice law after this whole thing is wrapped up. And so eventually this whole claim that the FBI planted documents is going to just, it's just gonna float away in the wind like Thanos just snapped his fingers. But what I, a Judge Eileen Cannon would like to do is to delay that for as long as possible. And that's what she's doing. And so in her initial order, she says, this is her justification that she gives for doing this. It did not contemplate that obligation. There shall be no separate requirement on plaintiff at this stage prior to the review of any of the seized materials. Now, uh, why? I don't know. She doesn't give a real reason. She just said, I didn't think about that earlier. Okay, <laughs> I guess you told Raymond Deary to handle this. Donald Trump requested that Raymond Deary handle this. First of all, he requested that a special master handle it. Then he said, I want Raymond Deary. And so Raymond Deary is like, okay, if you're claiming it, point to it. And Eileen Cannon, is not gonna let that happen. This is just the first of several insane things she's done. But Ben, what do you think? Well, I think it makes a lot of sense what Judge Cannon's doing here. She's given Trump a chance to see the stuff before saying the stuff. That way he can make it up on the spot and not have to actually prove that he knows which documents he had and which he didn't, which is, as you said, the most corrupting possible. So good for her, good for Trump for appointing a judge that really has got his back on this. Literally what they're instead doing is letting him first see all of the documents and at once comment on which are what kind of privilege, which he claims were planted, which weren't, once he sees them. That's literally yeah. like saying, uh, oh, the. Now that, yeah, this, this one that you just presented to me, this one was stolen, this one was planted. This one was stolen, this one was planted. <laughs> you gotta be able to do it from your mind. And I'm just wondering, it. I know you have more of the uh, trifecta of hits here from the judge, but I'm just wondering if at some point it can be evidence against Trump, the things that this judge decides, maybe on appeal. Because if you appoint a judge yourself, who is then making very biased decisions. And it also shows you the, the a forethought of Trump's crimes. He said, yeah. he, probably, he definitely thought, I'm definitely gonna put the most pro me judge in the county that covers Mar-a-Lago, cuz I've got plans. I've got post presidency <laughs> crime plans. I need my number one guy slash girl right there. And so at some point, can they say, look, look at the decisions from this judge, that's evidence that yeah. he indeed stole these documents. Yeah, I, look, I honestly hadn't thought about, like obviously he wants people who are gonna be biased towards him. I hadn't thought about specifically how much pressure there'd be on him mentally to pick someone in his, where he's going to go, where he knows he's gonna move. That's a great point. Um, I, I don't know if any of this can be counted as evidence against him, but it's it's definitely evidence against Eileen Cannon as well as um, our judiciary. So. Like she got the job from him. In theory, her next job could she could get that from him too. If he were to return to the presidency, 
I'm sure she'd like to be on the Supreme Court someday. Today is the day, of course, that we saw that Samuel Alito is saying that to even question the integrity of the Supreme Court is crossing a line. Well, I don't know, like Alito, don't talk to us. Talk to Judge Eileen Cannon because she's making you guys look bad. This whole thing looks really corrupt. Also, anyway, also sure, maybe it's crossing a line to question the court, but that was only how it used to be. Let's just say that was the precedent of not questioning the court. But apparently, <laughs> exactly. precedent doesn't matter. We don't follow it anyway, you know, that precedent was wrongly decided in the first place. <laughs> so there's that. He doesn't have to actually say that documents were planted, which documents were planted, because he couldn't say that. His legal team couldn't say that. She knows it and she's gonna protect him. It's incredibly corrupt, it's transparent, but there it is. There's also this. And again, if this whole thing is about delaying things, the best way to prove that to us would be to literally delay things, which she did. Yesterday, she ruled slowing down the process, giving Mr. Trump's lawyers significantly more time to assess documents. Under Judge Deary's previous proposal, he could have analyzed the central issue raised by Mr. Trump's claims of executive privilege as soon as late October this month. Instead now, she's gonna be delaying his submission of a report and recommendations until December. Once again, that is not only additional months that the special master that she appointed, that Trump requested, that he specifically said he wanted this guy, says is not necessary. He says he can do this by October. It also importantly pushes it past the midterms. And so, yeah, I, it's I, gotta be a coincidence, John, right? It's gotta, gotta be, be a coincidence that she pushed it just, just past the elections, huh? I don't it's buy it. It is literally any. just delaying it. And the delay is important, not only because it would be nice to know, but also like not everybody is going to stay on this topic, particularly after the midterms. Like let's say the Republicans take over. God only knows what they're gonna be planning. Trump could be the Speaker of the House by then. And we're supposed to be remembering all of these scandals? No, we need it, we need the, the details to come out now so we can evaluate them without our thoughts about it being muddled by the sheer passage of time. But she understands the flip side of that. And that is why she has been at all points trying to delay this process. This is just the most transparent version of it. Yeah, it's unbelievable. The only, there, there was one tiny victory for uh, the prosecution of this, for the, 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 the Justice Department that is trying to prove it. And at least there's like some modicum left of, we won't side with Trump when maybe people's lives are on the line. She agreed yes. to keep the unredacted affidavit sealed just because it would be literally risking the lives of FBI agents. That one she found maybe a, a half bridge too far, a, a, a Chris Christie closed bridge too far from from getting Trump's back. I'll do anything as long as it doesn't kill people. He's like, not my first choice, but I can live with it. Yeah, a hundred. No, that that's good, and also. That's kind of an easy one for her because I don't know how unsealing and allowing that guy's name to come out would Help directly Trump. benefit Trump. Trump would use it. He would tweet, he would bleed about the guy 50 times over the next three days, and the guy would definitely get death threats, but it wouldn't actually help his legal case. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.